Okay, hello everyone and uh, welcome to Impulse Talks uh, coming to you live from Paris. My name is uh, Benjamin Baudin and I'm very happy to, uh, to host this series of events, uh, especially today talking about innovation in industry. So our uh, ambition with Impulse Talks is uh, to provide an international overview of innovation and uh, tech development in the industry. Each month, uh, we'll be featuring some of the best startups uh, along with testimonies from industry leaders and perspective from uh, VC investors covering topics uh, such as digital construction, smart city, and uh, as it is the case today, Industry 4.0. So uh, regarding today's program, uh, we'll start with uh, Charles from uh, Houston, Texas from Technic. FMC, so he will be describing te Technip uh, approach with startups and give us his views on uh, Industry 4.0. And then uh, we'll hear from four entrepreneurs uh, from Belgium, from the Czech Republic, from Switzerland, and from Canada. So they will be pitching their innovations uh, while uh, showing us some use cases. And finally, we'll, um, we'll uh, Maximilian uh, will tell us more about HTGF, uh, one of the most active uh, early stage VC in Germany. And uh, he will also tell us how key industry 4.0 is for HTGF. So this is a one hour session and uh, we will have a few minutes uh, at the end for a Q&A. So just as a, as a reminder, this session uh, is being recorded. And please, we remind you to turn off your mic uh, and camera to make sure uh, everything goes smoothly. You can see on the on the screen at the moment some of the participants that have registered for this session. So it's mainly um, mainly uh, leaders from the from the industry um, from the industry in materials, uh, energy, engineering firms, uh, contractors, and also uh, venture capital firms. And uh, as I was saying, we're glad to gather people from all over the world on such an interesting topic, uh, which is uh, Industry 4.0. Um, a few words about Impulse uh, before we, we, click, we quickly start. So as I was saying previously, our role is to help to detect the most promising startups and try to connect them with the market. And we act uh, as a third party and facilitator between uh, industry players and uh, startup and investors. So we work uh, with some of the major uh, players, as you can see on the slide, and uh, more than uh, 500 startups. Uh, and we help to accelerate their go-to-market. So part of our job is to bring people together across the, the value chain and across uh, geographies. And this is exactly what uh, we'll be doing today, uh, considering how diverse uh, the audience is. Um, a few words about the topic of today, which is Industry 4.0. Uh, it can be a buzzword in many aspects. Uh, it's not easy to define. Um, we all have our, our own definition depending on our interests, but most will agree that uh, Industry 4.0 is an industry that is better for the environment, um, that enables working from a distance, that improves the security of the workers, and that shortens time-consuming processes. So I'm not going to go through uh, each one of them, but we have listed on this slide some relevant use cases or ways the industry uh, can be improved, whether through uh, asset optimization or uh, uh, augmented operator. So today, uh, regarding the, the program of today, we'll, we'll start with uh, Jan from uh, Aloxi. He will cover uh, real-time monitoring and optimization thanks to his uh, IoT device monitoring the positions of any valves. Then Florian from uh, Distran will uh, cover asset integrity maintenance and safety with his uh, highly technical ultrasound uh, camera that can detect any gas leaks. Uh, afterwards, Pavel uh, from Neuron Soundware will elaborate on predictive maintenance using AI and IoT to protect machines. And finally, uh, we'll have Campbell from Proxy that will, uh, who will speak about working conditions with his proxy band that provides safety uh, for the workers. Um, last thing before we start, uh, I promise we will be posting um, a link to a questionnaire in the chat below. So you can also flash the, the QR code and we'll send it to you afterwards. It's a really short one uh, so that you can give us feedbacks about uh, the event, which is uh, quite special today, uh, I must say. And also, if you want to be put in touch with any of the startups, that's uh, the place to go. So we'll be more than happy to make uh, any introductions. 
uh, I see that Charles is here, so great uh, timing. Um, so without further ado, let's start uh, this third edition of Impulse Talks dedicated to Industry 4.0 with Charles from Houston from Technip FMC. Great. All right. Thank you, Benjamin, for the introduction. And uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for being here, especially considering everything going on. So uh, as Benjamin said, I'm Charles Holtzclaw. I'm the Early Investment Manager for Technip FMC's External Technology Engagement Group. I'm responsible for sourcing early stage companies that are de developing novel disruptive technologies and determining both their suitability for potential investment and collaboration, as well as analyzing the potential strategic impact for our business. So I'm gonna spend the next few minutes introducing Technip FMC, our external technology group, and of course how Technip FMC is using Industry 4.0 innovations to differentiate and transform our business. Next slide. One more. So first, uh, a little bit about Technip FMC and our position on the global stage. So Technip FMC is a global leader in the energy industry. We deliver projects, products, technologies, and services. Uh, we're organized in three business segments, subsea, surface, and Technip Energies. And we're uniquely positioned to deliver greater efficiency across project life cycles from concept to project delivery and beyond. Uh, we have one overriding vision, and that's to enhance the performance of the world's energy industry. Uh, we're headquartered in London uh, with two major operational centers in Paris and Houston. Uh, we're listed both on the New York Stock Exchange, Euronext, and as a diverse and inclusive company, we employ roughly 37,000 uh, talented men and women representing 126 nationalities in 48 countries. 2019 company revenue was approximately 13.4 billion. Next slide. So Technip FMC is leading change with comprehensive product and service offerings. Uh, in the constant pursuit for innovation, smarter design, and seamless ways of working, um, our offerings range from individual products and services to fully integrated solutions with a, a single interface to ensure seamless execution. We won't go through the entire list, but you can see here a solid overview of what Technip FMC brings to its clients. Next. Uh, give a quick overview of my team and our purpose in the company. One more. So internal innovation, as a lot of you probably know, um, in a large corporate environment, is notoriously cumbersome. Um, so our mission on external technology engagement is to accelerate the pace of innovation by leveraging external ecosystems. Uh, this event today is one example of how we engage with external partners. Uh, the first step, of course, is to identify disruptive technologies. Uh, we don't fence ourselves into strictly energy. We have the latitude to look beyond energy, see what's really next on the horizon. We bring together the best teams and talent uh, searching for that synergy that results in pretty dramatic advances. Uh, when appropriate, we invest in the right startup to go beyond just co-development and really solidify the relationship. And of course, all this is done with an eye on being leaders in the industry development uh, mid to long-term technology strategy. And we're increasingly becoming a data-centric company, intelligent, intelligent products, assets, and a mission to achieve the old oil and gas valve true autonomy, that is unmanned and less manned facilities, improving HSC and efficiency on sites and fields. Next. So Technip FMC has four technology priorities. Uh, start from the left with emerging materials and manufacturing processes, think composites, fiber optics, additive manufacturing. Ultimately, we want our products to be lighter, cheaper, more resistant to corrosion and harsh environments. We think about easier installation on the seabed, reduced carbon footprint by removing steel and materials and a heavy focus on additive manufacturing. So we look for a shorter lead time and delivery in ways that are less capital intensive. So a benefit to both us and our clients. Uh, with digital, it's really about fusing uh, the traditional domains of products and projects with digital innovations. Novel methods of data handling, manipulation and visualization, advances in AI and machine learning, um, allows us to decrease CapEx and OpEx by reducing engineering man hours, uh, live digital twins in uh, operational phases uh, phases allows us to reduce plant shutdowns, maintenance costs, and so on. Um, and transforming project management, so new collaborative platforms, uh, improving HSC with VR to simulate complex offshore operations. Industry 4.0, which our, is our focus here today, uh, we utilize robotics, autonomous systems, intelligent and connected assets to again, improve HSE with unmanned or, or less manned operations, think underwater robots and enhanced subsea communications. 
um, ultimately resulting in operational excellence. So increased efficiency through data measurement, industrial IoT, and, and related technologies. Last but not least, uh, the energy transition, something we're committed to. Um, such technologies include carbon management of production facilities, electrification, green and blue hydrogen, underwater hydrogen, uh, under, underwater hydrogen storage rather, and green chem. Next slide. So our value proposition, and this is really key to the relationship and the decision for startups to work with us in the first place. So we offer opportunities that are nearly impossible for the startup to obtain on their own. Bring a strong reputation, technical expertise, and an unmatched network. Uh, the partner startup has access to our global sales channels and the opportunity to pilot and validate their concept on important, highly visible projects. And of course, there's the ever important uh, capital necessary to support the entire endeavor. Next slide. And now Industry 4.0, um, Health Technique, FMC is embracing it, and, um, and some examples of what we're doing. Next slide. So ultimately, what is it? As, as Benjamin alluded to, it's, it's become kind of a buzzword. Definitions are as varied as the technologies associated with it. Um, we know the, the term was coined in 2011 at Hanover Mesa, but it's really about uh, a cyber physical revolution, right? It's engaging digital physical processes for rapid response to shifting demands. Org wide networks allowing for unparalleled transparency across all aspects of production. Advances in AI and machine learning resulting in autonomous systems that are dramatically changing the landscape. Next slide. So the first of four examples here, on the left, we identified an opportunity to leverage subsea autonomous systems to enhance both diver safety and our IMR initiatives, that's inspection, maintenance, and repair. Uh, we partnered with a co company that was developing a smart hybrid ROV AUV, it's uniquely suited for automating such tasks. Uh, with the relevant Technique FMC business unit acting as the integrator, we co-developed and industrialized this technology. We're able to develop IMR solutions that meet the dynamic needs of both our industry and related industries like shipping. On the right, uh, we explored the use of a resident AUV system for monitoring, crisis management, and inspection and survey of hard to reach areas. Um, with, th with that particular startup, we conducted a POC project at our Latre manufacturing plant. What we discovered was that by utilizing this resident AUV system, we could substanti substantially reduce costs uh, from inspections, to the need for additional personnel, uh, increase production by reducing the need for scaffolding and reducing facility turnaround duration, and improving communications. So increasing agility and reactivity among project stakeholders uh, and developing visual intelligence capabilities. Next slide. In the last two, so starting on the left again, um, RFID tags, is they are in no way new technology. However, we researched the best use case to optimize supply chain and enable robust track and trace capabilities. A successful RFID pilot initiative was performed in a refinery expansion project. We tracked 1,200 underground pipe spools from prefab to laydown, uh, providing valuable data for further optimization. And finally, collaborative robotics on the shop floor. Uh, goes without saying, the, the labor, the kind of labor that you can see in the picture there is difficult and leads to issues with fatigue, injury, and error. We collaborated with a large French research institution uh, to utilize both VR and collaborative robotics to increase the efficiency of flexible armored wire folding. Uh, this results in uh, reduced operator pain and injury, which in turn led to substantial quality increase. Uh, the use of robotics also allowed for a 50% reduction in manpower, reducing costs and ultimately improving HSC. Next. So that's all I have for you today. Thanks again to Impulse for hosting this. Uh, thank you all for joining, and I look forward to hearing the rest of the presentations. All right, uh, should I start, Benjamin? Yeah. All right, thanks. I, I hope you can hear me well. So um, my name is, uh, is Jan, Jan Koppens. I'm a founder and CEO of Aloxi. Aloxi, a company which is uh, founded in, uh, in Belgium, in Antwerp, in 2017. 
Um, if you go to the next slide, uh, it describes a bit our, our, our purpose and, and, and what we do. So we're a, a spin-off of IMEC and the University of Antwerp, where we basically developed some in-depth knowledge on, on low-power sensoring and long-range communication networks, which we are trying to commercialize uh, towards specifically the chemical, oil, and gas and energy industry. So our idea is to help these companies with capturing additional data from the factory floor in order to smoothen their operations, give them more actionable insights and automate processes. Uh, if you look on the next slide there, you'll see where uh, the, the use case which we focus on today, it's uh, the use case of manual valve monitoring. So if you look at the chemical side or an oil and gas side, you'll see many manual valves, manual valves to control processes, to line up uh, storage facilities, to isolate sections and so on. The reason why these valves are manual is basically because it's very expensive to automate these valves. And if they're only manipulated once in a while, it's uh, economically not feasible to automate them. Now, the problem with these manual valves, so they're operated manually, but you don't know the position of these valves unless you put on an, an limit switch or a wired multi-turn VPI, which is still quite expensive because you have to draw wires in existing plants, you have to engineer this. So in many cases, companies decide not to do this and rely on operators to determine the position of these manual valves. So you have operators going to the field, checking the position of valves, which of course takes time. You put, you put these people in danger in certain situations, but most importantly, people can make mistakes. So if they report back the wrong position of a manual valves, it can lead to incidents, accidents, and so on. And there are numerous cases of accidents which happen because of valves being in the wrong position. Now, how do we solve this? On the next slide, you, you will see our solution. So we have developed uh, this sensor, we call it the Aloxy Pulse. It's a, it's a small battery operated sensor, which is attached to the hand wheel or lever of a valve. It doesn't really matter which type of valve, can be multi-turn valve, quarter-turn valve, horizontal, vertical, uh, can be gate, the guillotine valve, or whatever. As long as it can measure uh, the movement or the hand wheel, then we can measure the open close position of the valve. So it's easily attached to the hand wheel. Uh, it can be uh, done using straps or use a metal bracket. Installation takes only a couple of minutes. You don't need special permits. Um, so you attach it to the valve, it measures the position of the valve, and it will wirelessly transmit the, this position to wherever you need the data. Um, wireless protocols, uh, for the time being, we under, uh, support LoRa and Dash 7, which are two common protocols uh, found in the industry. Um, depending on which protocol and the behavior of the sensor, we uh, can easily achieve a battery autonomy of five years. You also see there on the slide the 40% close, so we don't only measure the open and closed position of the valve, we can also estimate a partially open valve, so valves which are only a certain percentage open. Um, you also see the ATEX symbol, so our solution is ATEX certified, so for, uh, for Europe at least, ATEX zone 1 and 2 gas. We're currently working uh, to get also FM approval uh, for certification in the US. So this uh, will be done in the, couple, the next couple of weeks. Uh, on the next slide, uh, you see the full architecture of the solution. So the sensor is part of it. So we also have gateways, can be our own gateways or can be third party gateways or network you already have, for instance, a LoRa network. And then a server which processes the data and uh, send the data to wherever you want the data to be. Can be our own dashboard or can be your DCS, your historian or another analytics pl platform uh, to process the data. Then in the next slide, uh, you'll see if uh, the video works. It's a, a video shot at one of our customers. It'd be as if in Antwerp. Uh, here we do a couple of projects. Um, yeah, I see that it's going a bit slow, but you'll see uh, the sensor being applied to one of the valves. In the video, you will see uh, an operator uh, looking at a, a number of uh, manual valves. Uh, applying the sensor to the valve so uh, it can be easy to test. In this case, it was used uh, with uh, with um, some plastic straps uh, as a test setup. By using the push buttons, you can uh, check or configure the device. And then it was uh, uh, in real time, the, the, the data was observed in the control room on our own dashboards. Uh, for some other customer, we've done an integration with their existing DCS. So you got the, the data there as well. 
So this was a movie about about uh, a project at Biazif. If we uh, look at Europe, we have other customers as well. So in Europe, we work with Biazif, with Dow, with Solvay, uh, with NG, Arkema, Repsol, Lanxis, and a number of others. Uh, in the US and in Middle East, we're also setting up projects uh, which are currently still uh, in the work because uh, we need some special certification for this. So if you have any interest in this, uh, please feel free to contact me and then we can discuss if we can uh, potentially work together. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Jan, for for this testimony uh, and for the, the presentation of, uh, of Aloxi. And again, um, if you wish to, um, to, to get in touch with Jan or with Aloxi or if you have any interest, uh, the, this is uh, why we post the, the, the questionnaire in the chat. Feel free to um, to uh, answer it. So now let's move to uh, predictive maintenance with uh, Pavel from uh, the Czech Republic with uh, Neuron Soundware. Yeah, so uh, I'm Pavel Konečny. I'm CEO and co-founder of Neuron Soundware. Uh, as I said, we use uh, um, technologies of artificial intelligence and IoT to uh, recognize broken machines. Uh, so on the on the next slide, it's uh, uh, illustrating uh, that it's uh, it's kind of really started with uh, with mechanical stuff with the uh, with recognizing how the mechanical system works, and we are processing audio. So so we get the sensors which are connected to machines and we listen to them. Yeah. You can uh, think about it as some use case. You might have been driven your car, then you can hear something strange coming from the engine. And that's what we emulate using artificial intelligence uh, in these microcomputers. Yeah. So the next slide, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, the reason why we choose audio, because that provides uh, the best signal for uh, recognition of these failures. It's, uh, uh, it's one of the key inputs, uh, uh, so we our sensors are collecting data from ultrasonic to vibration uh, frequency range, and so uh, from like uh, level of processing data, it's uh, the, the algorithms is trained on nominal sounds of machines, and we got large database of all sounds, uh, which it's being used for detection of any non nominals, any issues uh, uh, of uh, quite a variety type of m machines, yeah, like pumps, compressors, uh, generators, we got first installation on wind turbines and so on. Yeah, so, uh, so we can quickly calibrate it for particular machine uh, to be monitored. The next slide, please. Yeah, so uh, so it's uh, uh, we uh, kind of design it and uh, have built for us. It's uh, a device which is purposely uh, uh, kind of matching the industry needs so it has certifications now also for explosive environments so we can install it in chemical plants uh, and other uh, dangerous areas uh, it has six or seven sensors we can connect so um, uh, even a large machines we can be monitoring many different components and we use pso sensors which uh, it's being uh, in a picture connected also through an audio card to mobile phone so we have an option to collect the data also through uh, mobile application and all these information is being processed and uh, in our uh, platform which uh, uh, we will have a couple of screens uh, and a short demo uh, like a video which just colleagues uh, uh, showed uh, recently uh, presenting the technology in action at one of our customers so just excellent um, so you can just close with with the final slides um, so as a context to me, we, we got uh, customers like uh, Siemens, Volkswagen, Skoda, ACG, uh, and many more uh, across the Europe. Uh, first installation also in Japan. Um, so 30 people working on the technology last year. So uh, building something which will reshape the whole way how the predictive maintenance is done, automating uh, the whole uh, data analysis. Yeah, so if you're interested, Please don't hesitate, send me an email uh, or just give me a call. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pavel, uh, right on time. 
Um, let's now move on to uh, this run uh, with Florian from uh, Switzerland. So Florian, you have the floor. Yes, hello everybody. Can you hear me well? Yes, yes, yes perfect. Okay. So I'm Florian Perrodin, I'm a CEO and founder of Distron. And what we do at Distron is ultrasonic cameras. So on the next slide, uh, yes, so we, re, uh, we, we do a gas leak detection, but on the next slide, you will see a video of what our sensor is doing. So uh, on this video, you see that we are able to spot something and this something is a gas leak that is at more than 10 meters. And uh, we can pinpoint the exact location of the gas leaks. Actually, there are two. And one other thing that you might have seen is that below on the, on, on the screen, you have an estimation of the leak rate of this gas, uh, this gas leak. So this is used by operator to prioritize maintenance and to decide uh, whether they should uh, repair the leak right now, or if it can wait uh, uh, days or weeks, uh, depending on the, on the gas and uh, this uh, value. So on the next slide, um, you see the, the, the camera. So the way it works is like, when you have a, a gas leak, uh, you have some sound that is emitted. And this sound, or, or ultrasound, uh, because it's very high in frequency, propagate through the sensor. And I have such a sensor here. So it reach the surface of the sensor, which has 124 microphone. And uh, the sound will be triangulated. So we triangulate uh, where the sound source is located and we uh, can superimpose with the optical camera that you see at the center and get the, the video that you have seen before. So uh, we, you have, there is a screen on, uh, behind and where the, the operator can see uh, where is the leak in real time. So um, the, the, the the advantage uh, mostly are uh, that it's um, a lot uh, faster than a previous uh, solution, like uh, where you had to scan every single element. But it's also a much more safe solution because uh, you don't have the contact with the gas anymore. So the gas can be toxic, can be explosive. Uh, but here you just uh, sense the sound, so you can can be at meters away uh, from the leak. The uh, third thing is uh, the increased reliability, and I will come back afterwards uh, on this, is that uh, nowadays people are uh, scanning every single element. And uh, you have seen in the presentation of uh, Jan in Aloxy, like uh, just in a manual valve in a plant, you can have a thousand of them, uh, and uh, there are uh, other elements than a valve that can uh, leak. Also, uh, the inspections are, are done uh, during a plant operation, so you don't need, uh, we reduce downtime because we don't need to, to stop the plants. So on the next slide, um, there is a, a bit of uh, our three verticals. So it's a chemical plant, uh, energy, and, uh, and refining. And we are working with uh, uh, key uh, uh, clients that use uh, on their day-to-day -day operation uh, cameras uh, such as Total, uh, Shell, uh, or Air Liquid. Uh, on, on the next slide, so I will now present some use case uh, that we have uh, because it was the, the topic of the webinar. Um, so one is uh, plan, uh, so schedule outage. So basically in uh, such uh, plants that I described before, uh, you need to uh, sometimes uh, shut down your unit because you will uh, uh, repair or, or, or upgrade. And before outage, people check for leaks to be repaired uh, during outage. And uh, after outage, you have the commissioning phase where people are soap spraying, so putting some soap uh, everywhere to check uh, if the installation is tight. And uh, this, you can uh, imagine that this takes uh, weeks. And when you know that one day costs them uh, more than $100,000, uh, it's very uh, fast to see the return on investment of Infrapro, uh, where uh, you only need a few uh, hours to, to do the same. So on the next slide, uh, this is more uh, like uh, another use case is uh, the day-to-day -day work of an operator. That's, uh, so an operator in a plant, 
he knows basically 90% uh, of uh, the location of the leaks. And uh, because they, they are at a similar position, but there are the 10 uh, last percent which are inaccessible uh, and location where people never go. And uh, but that these are the dangerous leaks actually. And uh, uh, Ultra Pro, uh, because it can spot leaks from far, uh, is very, very good at finding uh, leaks at unexpected locations. So I put two uh, kind of two leaks. One is a hydrogen leak that is uh, under a pipe. So actually, we see it because the sound bounces on the ground and we can see uh, below and, uh, and through a grating. So on the next slide, to conclude, um, so I would say Ultra Pro is the perfect tool to improve reliability and safety, also energy efficiency with uh, minimal infer interference uh, with the operation. Uh, so next and um, last slide, uh, just my contact and uh, I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Florian, for those uh, quite interesting use cases and for also showing your product uh, live. Um, so now uh, we'll move to uh, to Canada uh, with uh, Campbell from Proxy, and we'll uh, cover the topics of uh, uh, security and safety for the for the workers. So, Campbell, it's now your turn. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Campbell McDonald, and I'm the CEO of, uh, of Proxy. Thanks for making time for me today. I'm going to just quickly cover uh, the solutions that we offer uh, to uh, for industrial organizations. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, next slide. So our core product is a uh, wearable device that protects workers from electrocution. Uh, it's designed to be worn all day and every day, and it provides a... Uh, an unmistakable uh, notification in the form of vibration to warn workers when they're at risk to step away. It's also a connected solution uh, that provides data visibility around compliance and near misses on the work site to allow organizations to predict um, where risk is occurring and to allow uh, it to proactively invest in safety measures and remediation to uh, uh, reduce uh, electrical injuries and, uh, and mitigate risk in the organization. Um, in March of this year, when COVID was announced, uh, a number of our customers uh, simultaneously asked for a new feature to be added, which is uh, for the band to sense when another band was six feet away. And we, uh, we saw that there was a real opportunity here to help mitigate the impacts of COVID in the workplace, and we responded with a new product called Contact. Uh, next slide, please. So contact is a social distancing and contact tracing solution uh, that works in a very simple way. It uses Bluetooth to sense when another band is uh, two meters away and provides a gentle reminder for workers to maintain their social distance. This is really a change in behavior and allows organizations to help uh, reinforce social distancing. Uh, but it also provides a contact tracing solution, which allows organizations to identify when um, who has been in contact with someone in the uh, previous uh, uh, 14 days. And so this allow, not only minimizes the chance of an outbreak within a workplace, but also um, allows uh, organizations to mitigate the impact of an outbreak uh, if there is one. Uh, it requires no infrastructure, um, and deployment and data backhaul is all done with a, uh, with a mobile phone. Uh, next slide, please. Or actually, can you show the video, please? Thank you. This is a quick demo of proxy contact. Here, Ryan is activating his band by bringing it within six feet, and asynchronously, he's gonna show it again when his band vibrates as well. There's a slight delay just to ensure that the distance is accurate and that you've been in contact. Once you have that, you can easily upload the data to our servers and then conduct a contact trace. And here you can see in an instance who you've been in contact with and for how long in the previous 14 days allowing you to use a digitally augmented uh, contact trace in your worksite. Next slide, please. So this has been a huge boon for organizations that have been impacted by COVID. Traditionally, we have focused mostly on uh, electrical contractors, uh, construction companies, and manufacturing. And um, uh, what we saw with these essential workers is that they were at risk of, uh, of COVID. They were essential workers, so they were required to remain on the job. Uh, and they really did not have the tools to mitigate uh, the risk through social distancing or respond to positive cases. 
And so we've had an overwhelming response. Uh, we've got 55,000 units uh, in production, and we've sold into 140 companies since uh, launching in March. And so the, uh, the demand, response, and need is very acute, and we're really delighted to uh, add contact uh, to Voltage in our product mix uh, for solutions for industrial workplaces. Um, the bands sell for $100 each, uh, and that includes both the hardware, the software, and the, uh, the contact tracing. Uh, and if you have any questions, I'd love to hear back from you later. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, uh, Campbell, for this uh, quite interesting uh, presentation and this uh, solution, which is even more uh, relevant uh, at the moment. Also, thanks a lot for being with us today, because uh, as a reminder for the, the audience, it's uh, it's 6.56 a.m. at the moment in Vancouver. So thanks a lot for uh, taking the time. Um, after uh, hearing um, a great uh, testimony from uh, an industry uh, leader and four uh, great startup uh, presenting us their use case, let's now hear the um, perspective from a, a big VC, uh, quite uh, important VC in Germany, one of the biggest early stage um, VC fund, and how um, and their perspective on Industry 4.0. So I'm happy to give the floor to Maximilian from HTGF. Um, now your, your turn. Perfect. Um, thank you so much for inviting me um, to basically share our perspective on this uh, domain. Um, as I will show in the next slide, um, probably the next one after that, um, just to, a quick word on myself and my own journey to put, help to put fix in the context. I'm a physicist by training studied at Cambridge, uh, then entered the realm of industry and industrial innovations, worked as a postdoc for three years before being a project manager myself in um, best practices uh, and uh, sustainable uh, sort of design thinking uh, with large uh, construction companies and uh, in the UK building sector space. Uh, during this time in parallel, I, I also started developing my own ideas for startups, launched two of my own companies, one in the education space and one in uh, the services field, where, for instance, you could hire specific crafts people, um, technicians, electricians, etc., via a, a networking platform, which we called NetWiki. We launched this uh, in emerging countries such as Kenya, Morocco, and other places where there's a high uh, demand for in uh, services, on demand services. Um, as of last year, we are we, so we're closing the company. I did a switch uh, to becoming an investment manager. This uh, was quite an interesting uh, feat because, uh, coming from a founder's perspective myself, Seeing the other side is uh, not only interesting, it also enables us to have a bit more compassion and uh, sort of uh, joint understanding of the situations and dynamics that is typical in a startup life cycle. And on the next slide, uh, you can see that industrial tech or industry 4.0, as uh, you know, we now define it, is quite a focus at our VC, uh, at essentially our, our company. Uh, we have a team of uh, essentially 14 people who are just dedicated to this subject. Uh, this is one of the three major pillars at our um, venture capital, the other two being life science and software. Uh, our team captures a broad range of competencies from physics to um, banking to simply industrial backgrounds in order to really dive into the subject and be able to, at this early stage in the history of a startup, be able to see the potential, understand the mechanisms at place, and really have the confidence to be a lead investor or at least the first larger investor um, and follow on the uh, company's journey. On the next slide, um, you will see also that uh, HEGF is um, Sorry, uh, just to go on to the next slide. Uh, HGGF is uh, Germany's most active VC, especially when it comes to seed stage investments. So seed stage, uh, just to take a, a moment, uh, everyone has their own definition. 
in a way for us, seed stage is this phase where a company had had a proof of concept, uh, not necessarily have achieved any revenues, but may or may not have done so. Uh, they're ready to explore the market, launch uh, projects with companies, uh, find partners, uh, and essentially uh, grow the business. At this point in time, we position ourselves as a partner. Um, and uh, as you will see in the next slide, um, we, uh, we've done uh, currently over 600 investments in tech uh, startups, we, uh, which further have been enabled with follow-on rounds of over two and a half billion euros in investment into these businesses. Um, we ourselves manage a, uh, a fund of uh, close to one billion. Um, we uh, invest, like I said, in seed stage, but we follow on later on as well. We can invest up to three uh, million euros in a particular company. What makes us unique is that we're back not only uh, we're like a public private fund with 66% government back, 34% private. And uh, on the private side, we have all the major companies that are known probably to all of you uh, globally, as well as specifically in the German space. And uh, this gives us a huge potential uh, for the companies we invested in to initiate pilot projects, work together, really uh, harness the fact that they can uh, operate in this, especially not only industrial side, but especially in the industrial side where um, sales acquisition, um, project um, setups and other things take quite a long time and we can accelerate this process because our committee formed by these companies will see the startups coming through uh, right at the first day when we started investing and already can form at that point plans to work together. On the next slide um, you will see also that this has then of course led to the fact that not only with follow-ups but we were able to accompany these startups from seed to exit. Uh, we were incorporated over fi uh, 15 years ago, pretty much to the dot, um, and starting already two years after the fund has been brought to life, we've seen our first exits, uh, and 2020 is still in the making as such, with great companies like Phosphor X and other ones, already now being in the news and showing how um, there's a big uh, growing scene that uh, not as only is dominated by German companies, but also in the entire European region uh, through the investments that, uh, that we've done together. Um, on the next slide, uh, let me show you also currently in our portfolio, just from the perspective of industry and industrial tech, uh, what areas we're focused on and what investments we've made. Um, per, some key known companies might be like Next Kraftwerke in the energy market space, uh, especially on the consumer solar side. Uh, we have um, a wide range from software industry related solutions all the way to pure hardware sensor technologies. Uh, we, we, uh, spectrum, we go the spectrum from uh, mobility down to quantum technology. We see all of this part of the industri industry revolution that we're trying to foster. And uh, particularly, we believe that, um, especially in the space of automization, assisted and augmented uh, industrial processes, there's still a lot of room for growth. And we believe that this portfolio is just the beginning of what will unravel over the next years. And we're very excited also to be here today in order to share this a bit with you. And for that very reason, I've taken out two companies in particular. On the next slide, uh, Flynex, which is a Germany-based company, which is focused specifically on the automatic remote maintenance aspect. Uh, to put it in a nutshell, uh, they started off with uh, empowering uh, industry companies to use drones to do their maintenance on, uh, on, on site and uh, go from uh, large construction projects to uh, infrastructure setups to energy power plants, etc., and be able to generate a lot of data in a short period of time, cost effectively, and then uh, completely analyzed in one uh, workflow essentially. 
saving companies a, a tremendous amount of uh, man time as well as um, costs and um, improving their productivity. On the, sec on the next slide, you will see the energy, a startup that is involved, um, sorry, next slide, please. Uh, a startup that is involved in grid scale renewable energy solutions. Um, the Energy is a French company um, based uh, uh, primarily in uh, France and entering through our investment uh, into the German space, which again HGGF has been able to enable through our network connections and as well as being able to be very closely aligned with energy companies like LEE, EDE, Tuga. Uh, to give uh, them the opportunity. Sorry, I don't think the slide switched, at least not on my screen. Take a pause here. Yeah, and uh, their biggest uh, innovation breakthrough was to make grid scale storage um, economical uh, by coming up with an interesting process of uh, optimizing not only the business, and the financial flow, but also the technology and software side. So it's a complete package solution uh, for the industry on that level. And now to my last slide, um, to, to give also the entrepreneurs listening on this call an opportunity to connect. We are quite a uh, sort of seed-based partner. We enter at an early stage. Typically, we invest around uh, 600,000 euros. We can go up to 1 million follow-up rounds I already mentioned. We're very flexible in terms of being lead or co-investor. And uh, we're also open in terms of dynamics with public or private investment. For anyone interested, here you can see my email address. And um, I look forward to being in touch and supporting uh, the startups in future as well as join people in their journey. Thank you very much. Thank you, Max, for your presentation. My name is Thibault Le Seguillon, and I am a partner at Impulse. Usually at this time, I do a short summary of the presentation and put it together in perspective. Uh, because of the time, I'm going to skip this part today, and I'm going to go to the next slide. I would like to thank our speakers and the startup which have joined us today and follow us in this uh, maelstrom of internet hacking. Um, thank you to Charles, to Jan, Pavel, Florian, Campbell, and, and Max to present today. Next, please. Coming soon, uh, next month, second Wednesday, uh, 1500 Paris time, we will go to G digital construction. Then in November, we'll talk about smart city, and we will come back to industry 4.0 in December before starting 2021 uh, with digital construction and smart city. Thank you. Next, uh, I would like to thank especially our distribution partner today uh, across the world in Belgium, in, uh, in the UK, in Estonia, in Germany, and in Israel. And in Switzerland, of course. Thank you. Next. As I just say, our next uh, Ample Stokes will be on Wednesday, October 14th at 3 p.m. Paris. And the topic will be digital construction. Please join us at this time. I don't think we will have time for question and answer today, but I will really ask you to uh, fill out the survey we are going to send. You can uh, scan the QR code, or you can uh, take, type, if you type really fast, uh, the link, but we will send it to you. And please take the not even three minutes uh, to fill out the survey. It's important for us. Thank you all for your patience. Thank you all to be agile and to switch link in the middle of the, or at the beginning of this presentation. We appreciate uh, your presence and we'll uh, tell you, see you next month. Cheers, bye.